Last night's elections were pretty awful for Republicans. Bill de Blasio, who's probably the least impressive mayor in the United States, easily won another term in New York City. Democrats took the New Jersey governor's mansion, installing yet another Goldman Sachs alum in a position of political power. In Washington state, Democrats won the Senate and with it total control of state government. But Republicans had their very worst night in Virginia. Ralph Northam beat former RNC chairman Ed Gillespie by almost nine points. That's three points more than Hillary Clinton's performance in Virginia last fall. It's almost seven points ahead of Governor Terry McAuliffe's win four years ago in Virginia. Yesterday morning, to put it into perspective, Republicans had two-thirds of Virginia's House of Delegates. Now, depending on how a few races shake out, Democrats could have a majority. It was a rout. How did it happen? Well, Donald Trump is unpopular in Virginia, and that's definitely part of the reason. But it's not the whole story. Democrats won after embracing the dark side of American politics, exploiting racial fears and deepening tribal divisions. In real life, Ed Gillespie was a pro-immigration moderate. By the end of the race, Democrats and their reliable allies in the press were dismissing him as a white supremacist. Northam's allies ran the single ugliest political ad in living memory. It charged that Republicans want to hunt down and murder non-white children. The ad didn't make a political argument. It didn't take a position on taxes or crime or the environment or schools or anything that might make the state or the country a better place. Its only purpose was to terrify and divide. This is the politics of racial hatred. Vote for me because the other guy wants to murder your kids. Our opponent isn't misguided. He's evil. There's no defending an ad like that, but Democrats did it anyway. In a normal party, someone with perceived moral authority would have stepped forward to denounce the ad. Barack Obama, maybe, or Bill and Hillary Clinton. But all of them were silent and allowed the race baiting to continue in Virginia, and it did. This is an ominous development in American politics precisely because it works so well. Democrats across the country inevitably will imitate what just happened in Virginia, and they'll probably win a bunch of races as a result. You'd think they'd care about the consequences of sowing racial division in an already racially divided country, but they care about winning more. Northam's victory tells you a lot about the Democrat strategy going forward. The party has all but stopped making rational arguments or even trying to win swing voters over to its positions. That's time consuming. It requires compromise. It's much easier to change the composition of the voter base. More than 50 years after Ted Kennedy's Immigration Act, it's no longer even necessary for Democrats to win native-born middle-class Americans who work in the private sector. So they stopped trying. Virginia has transformed politically because it has been transformed demographically. For example, in 1970, 1% of that state was born outside the United States. Today, that number is 12%. 12% of Virginia is foreign-born, and that has made all the difference. So if you're wondering why the idea of national borders suddenly so unpopular among Democratic office holders, if you're wondering why the deadly plague of opiate addiction in middle America causes barely a stir in Washington, now you know the answer. They're not their base anymore. They've replaced you.